What's going on guys, Shane here. We're continuing the topic on the mechanics of striking, and today we're talking about the difference between accuracy and precision. Now there is a difference, and it's what differentiates good fighters from world-class champions. Let's take a look. All right guys, let's get right into it. So the difference between precision and accuracy. Accuracy is being able to throw shots throughout the fight and land at a specific area that I'm aiming to hit. If I'm throwing a bunch of punches to the head and I land a lot of those shots to the body, maybe I'm throwing kicks to the legs and I'm landing them successfully. Now that's accuracy, that's being accurate in a fight, but precision is taking a single shot, a punch, an elbow, a knee, a kick, and deciding to hit a specific target with that single shot. I'm not only hitting on a specific target, but also deciding what part of your hand am I hitting with? What part of my shin am I hitting with? Am I concentrating all of my pressure into the ball of my foot for a front snap kick to the solar plexus? Some of the best fighters doing it right now are Triple G and Conor McGregor. And Conor McGregor gave us his secret years ago. He said, precision beats power and timing beats speed. And I get questions all the time where people say, Shane, how do I beat a guy that has more power than me? Or if I'm fighting a guy that's really fast and he's throwing a lot of punches, how can I beat someone like that? Well, think about it. Our guard is designed minimal movement to be able to block shots from coming in, right? The second that I throw a punch, let's say I throw a jab, my face is open, my body is open. Not only that, but there's pressure in my legs. Everyone agrees that power comes from the legs when we throw punches, right? Every punch starts in the legs. But it's also when I land, I'm heavy on my feet now, so I'm open for a leg kick. And think about it. Aldo is a very fast puncher. He was coming in with that leaping lead hook and that punch still land and he ate that shot, but he knew I was more precise and I timed it with that drop set cross to take Aldo out. Okay, so it's not only about where am I hitting, but it's also at what point of my hand or my body am I hitting them with. Let's take this to the next level. If I throw uh, an elbow strike, a lot of times we practice on the heavy bag or we practice on pads where we go like this. Power, yeah, looks good, I make contact, but I felt it from my wrist to the tip of my elbow and it got dispersed over this whole wide area, okay? First of all, I'm not gonna be hitting someone that's this wide in a fight. Someone's head is this wide, much smaller. And even more than that, I wanna hit specific areas. I wanna hit the eyebrow, I wanna hit the nose. I wanna hit right where the mandible connects to the rest of the head, that jaw right there, okay? So if I start practicing my precision and training, it's gonna carry over into a fight. Now if I take that same exact elbow and he's facing me and I throw it, then yes, I'm gonna concentrate it onto the bridge of his nose because that's the first thing that I make contact with. But maybe I wanna hit the eyebrow. Then I concentrate it and I make sure that I hit with the tip of my elbow to that very spot on his head. Or if he turns a little bit, I can hit and try to rattle him with the entire forearm. Or if I turn it again and be more precise, I can hit that eyebrow. I can get dig it right into the orbital. I can go for the nose. So precision really does matter, but it changes. It moments, milliseconds within the fight. How are they turning? What are they giving you? What angle are you coming in at? And also what part of your body are you making contact with? Now the margin of error is greater now because I have a very small target against a very small target. I have to be more precise. Otherwise I may whiz right past them and miss or they move their head and I don't get that uh, connection that I'm looking for. So how do you work on your precision? You're gonna go bare knuckle on the heavy bag. Now I know this sort of contradicts what I've talked about in the past. I've always said that you should hit with all four knuckles when you're hitting on the heavy bag. For beginners, I still recommend that. Why? Because it's safer. You're dispersing it over four knuckles as opposed to concentrating it into just one knuckle. Gardening gloves are great because it protects the skin on your knuckles. You ever hit the heavy bag a couple days in a row and then you split the skin, you get scabs, and every time you hit it, open it opens it back up? It's a pain in the butt. So avoid that by wearing just some thin leather gardening gloves. Now think about it. If I'm always wearing 12 ounce gloves or 16 ounce gloves when I hit the heavy bag, they're way more forgiving. If I have bad technique, maybe my wrist is out of line, the wrist support and the hand wraps will assist a little bit. Or if I throw a looping lead hook and I hit with my thumb, there's padding on the thumb. So again, it's a little more forgiving when I have these big cushioned boxing gloves on, but if I'm going bare knuckle or just wearing some gardening gloves, I need to make sure that my form is perfect and I'm landing with the knuckles that I intend to land with. There's different times that I hit with different parts. Like that last hook right there, hook to the body, that was the bottom three knuckles that I landed with. All right, boxer's fracture is very common, so I don't want to concentrate it just into the pinky because then I'll break this bone, uh, metacarpals in the side of my hand here, right? So maybe I do want to disperse it a little bit more, but the body's soft. And we see uh, Triple G 
throw palm down when he goes to the body. Why? Again, it's the same reason. He wants to concentrate all of that power from the floor up, twisting of the hips and shoulders. We talked about in the previous videos. He gets a little bit of that elastic recoil in his shots, and then he concentrates it precisely into that one knuckle directly into the liver. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Now remember, safety and patience is key if you're training bare knuckle on the heavy bag. Knuckle conditioning is a slow, gradual process, and I do have an entire video in the description below. There's a link to a video. Check that out. Remember, take your time and protect your money makers, but also work on your precision. Until next time, I'm Shane with Fight Tips for the underdogs.